let's talk about some of the people you spoke with while you were out there. Um, anybody you want to you want to queue up? Yeah, so uh, I mentioned earlier that we talked uh, to uh, Congressman Ben Klein from Virginia, sort of an ascendant member of Congress, who you mentioned he doesn't want a new Trump. He likes the Vance pick. I wanted to talk to people about J.D. Vance because he's the focus today, really. He's speaking. It will be the first speech that he's given. Um, and conservative movement people here, not just new right people, but conservative movement people here are really excited about J.D. Vance. There's a ton of enthusiasm. His wife is speaking tonight as well. People haven't heard a lot from her yet, and they're excited to see her on stage and to kind of meet a new person, meet the new uh, sort of family face of the Republican Party's future as a lot of people see it. So uh, I, was, I was interested to hear that uh, from Congressman Klein because uh, reporting in places like Politico uh, from some old GOP hands uh, as they're sourcing is that there is a divide. Uh, the, the Wall Street Journal has had some harsh words, unsurprisingly, for <laughs> J.D. Vance. Um, uh, but, you know, among regular people here, uh, to the extent you can be regular if you're at the Republican National Convention. Uh, there's just a lot of excitement about J.D. Vance. Terry Schilling, who's been on the show before, big ally, big ally of Vance. He runs a, a basically a, a family values um, group that spends a lot of money on things like women's sports and those really red meat cultural issues. He's very excited uh, that Vance was the pick. So talk to him and Talked to a, a local woman who's here selling dresses and felt the energy was really good, felt the attention on Milwaukee is really good. So uh, let's take a listen. Everyone's feeling good, having a good time here so far. Everyone's excited about Trump and J.D. Vance? I would just say the energy here is just so amazing. Everyone's excited to be here. The security has been amazing, and there's no place we'd rather be than here this weekend. Some reporting is that people aren't, not everyone is excited about the J.D. Vance pick, but you feel good about it. I do. I think uh, J.D. represents the future of the party, and uh, Trump has uh, great policies that represent the working man, and J.D. Vance is going to continue those and help to put those into place once uh, Donald Trump wins the White House. He is a champion, not just for families, but for working Americans, for everyday people that just want a voice, that want to know that they matter, that, that, that they're not just run by a bunch of elite clowns in Washington, D.C., and on Wall Street, and in Hollywood. We are a great nation. We have a great people here. And, and J.D. Vance understands that. He knows that it comes from, the, from, the, from the, the bottom up, not the top down. Anything you want to underline about any of those interviews? It's, you know, it sounds like a GOP talking point, Ryan, but uh, it's, it's actually true in this case. You know, not all talking points are false. There's just a lot of unity here. Um, and were you at were you at Cleveland in 2016? I actually mm -hmm. wasn't there, but yeah. I think it's worth highlighting just how dramatically different that is, because there were actual fights on the floor. You know, people like yeah. Kim Cuccinelli, I think maybe even Ted Cruz at the time. There were like actual fights on the floor. Yeah. Right. Ted Cruz didn't even right. endorse Trump in his speech and would just what was booed throughout the entire like second half of it. There's just none of that. And there's no um, underhanded comments along the lines of like what you would see if you talk to the Wall Street Journal editorial board about Vance populism and statism or, you know, Trump being you know such a joke or unfit. Like there's a, there, there's no reluctance about Donald Trump anymore. I think that's what I'm really trying to say is that there's just not people who are um, kind of begrudgingly aboard the Trump train. Like just about everybody here is, and, and maybe this is actually different if Saturday didn't happen, that maybe you would still hear some mm -hmm. of the grumbling over Trump, but there's absolutely none of that anymore. And 2016 also had Clint Eastwood, uh, which uh, perhaps they're gonna- No, that was, hmm. that was 2012. Oh, 2012 with Mitt Romney, right? Yeah, you're getting that's old, right. so you mix yes. up your conventions. That's right. Yes, that's <laughs> right. Yeah, that's right, because he was, say he was saying that uh, <laughs> he was interviewing Obama in a chair, but there was actually nobody in the <laughs> chair, but he was saying it was Obama. That's right. Yes, I am mixing up, uh, mixing up my conventions. Um, so no, no Clint Eastwood uh, this, this year, but just give us a little preview of what people are, are expecting from Vance tonight. Yeah, uh, you know, I think they're expecting a very polished uh, J.D. Vance who talks about uh, the, the red meat issues like immigration. I think they're expecting to hear that for sure about elites, about that kind of us versus them dynamic. And uh, one thing we could probably put a tear shoot up of this that I, I think is worth highlighting, not just in the context of J.D. Vance, 
Uh, but when we were talking about Ron DeSantis and Nikki Haley, I, I wrote for Unheard this morning that as Democrats, I mean, there's a, that AP Nork poll that came out today. Joe Biden did his Lester Holt interview on Monday. Democrats right now, it's like two thirds of them in that poll mm -hmm. want someone other than Joe Biden. It's suddenly after Republicans were hammering this for years about Biden's frailty, suddenly Democrats are paying attention and listening and Republicans aren't talking about it at all here, mm -hmm. fascinatingly. Um, and, you know, some of the people I talked to said, you know, the Democrats right now are like the Soviets in Afghanistan. The Republicans are letting the wildfire burn on its own. Another said that after Saturday, uh, it was just a matter of a source said, um, everyone understanding it's us versus them and, and Biden is not up to the job. So you don't have to be talking about that. So I actually wouldn't expect, you know, you, Ron DeSantis and Nikki Haley each had a, like a line about it. And it was just alluding, kind of joking. Sarah Huckabee Sanders, whose speech was, I would say, the most well received of the hmm. principal speeches last night. Like she people, she got a massive applause. Vivek got massive applause, too. But Sarah Huckabee Sanders was has clearly endeared herself to this crowd. People absolutely loved her. She had one line about it, too. I'm not expecting to hear a lot about it from Vance. I'm expecting to hear something that's, uh, uh, you know, typical J.D. Vance, a little bit more intellectual, focused on the future and uh, absolute elites versus everyone else. So the kind of business class, the Wall Street Journal, uh, the, the the Republican establishment types that are that are upset by the J.D. Vance uh, pick are certainly going to be watching it closely to see if they get any olive branches thrown their way. I know uh, there are definitely some Republican consultants who are who are nervous that Vance opens Republicans up more to the kind of to the Democratic row voter um, who you know surged out in in 2022 uh, after. Roe was overturned. Uh, do you expect that Vance will make olive branches in either of those directions, either to um, people concerned that he's too extreme on abortion rights or to uh, the the Republican kind of Wall Street Journal class? Or like, it, it, do, do you expect more of a kind of populist uh, red meat speech? And what would be, what would be, what would the cues be? What, what would the clues and the cues be that we should look for to see kind of uh, where where he came, where he decided to come down on the based spectrum. Mm, that's such a good question. Um, I was actually, you know, as somebody who's who's followed Vance very closely and knows a lot of people in the Vance circles, um, as as Sagar does, and as you probably do too, Ryan. Uh, they, I was very surprised by his Mifepristone answer on the news uh, before he, well, he was still trying out mm -hmm. auditioning for the VP slot, uh, where he said basically he supported the policy uh, as it was about Mifepristone. It was shocking to people in the pro life community who also felt rather shocked uh, the by the Trump platform for people who are. Not familiar. Yeah, yeah. Right. Go ahead. Right. Yeah. And the, and they they really they toned down. Uh, they mm -hmm. took out you know the the part about now again they they actually truncated the whole platform. Um, but you, and you'll hear a little bit of this in the or you heard a little bit of this in my, my interview with Terry Schilling. But yeah, there was people really felt uh, slighted in the anti-abortion community about uh, how things have transpired over the course of the last week. Trump is obviously trying to moderate on that, and so I would expect really not to hear much about life from J.D. Vance, even though uh, it's a it's a huge issue that everyone talked about before uh, the last you know, Trump has sort of changed that just in the last month, uh, to be honest. Um, so I wouldn't expect to hear that. I would expect to hear this kind of intellectual case for populism. And I, probably like you, I've been going back and reading a lot of old interviews that J.D. Vance did just in the last five years, um, even you know back when he was touring for Hillbilly Elegy, mm -hmm. and he's talking about like Rene Girard. He's talking about like these super high level intellectual stuff uh, because that's the kind of guy he is. And so uh, you know, I would, I still think JD Vance, the, how he presents himself tonight, the mystery of how Donald Trump presents himself tomorrow will partially be solved. So like to some extent, I don't know what. Trump wants to see from J.D. Vance because Trump hasn't said a lot about what mm -hmm. he wants to see from J.D. Vance, except for his original true social post. The first thing that he said about J.D. Vance is that he's a Marine. Mm -hmm. uh, part of me really thinks that what, what uh, Donald Trump likes about J.D. Vance more than the red meat, more than the policy, is that he is a Marine with a good looking young family, um, a, a, a good looking, you know, young family of like it, with immigration involved that sort of allows JD mm -hmm. to talk about immigration in an interesting way. And he's loyal. And so part of right. me thinks that we'll see and a, he liked a, that he was a, a summa Vance. cum laude, which, yes. might not, which might not actually be true. Cause didn't he go to Ohio 
not Yale. He's he, you know, Ohio undergrad. State, but then he went to Yale Law. Yeah, right, right. And he, no, he enlisted so, anyway, first and then went back yes. to school. <laughs> yes. But yeah, so I, I think I would expect to hear a lot about J.D. Vance's personal story and mm-hmm. that popular sort of us versus them, as opposed to, you know, kind of a policy grocery list. Yeah, I bet that's right. Like he, and he's a good writer, so he's going to tell, he'll probably tell that, uh, that the same story that people are familiar with if they read the book. But this is his chance to be introduced to millions of people who have no idea who he is. And this will be the first their first encounter with him. So looking forward to seeing how that goes. Um, well, up next, we'll talk about um, Elon Musk deciding he's going to cut uh, ra- regular $45 million checks uh, to help Trump and Vance stick around for that next. Hey, if you liked that video, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to Breaking Points. If you want to see the rest of CounterPoints, go to breakingpoints.com to become a premium member and get the full uncut show every morning in your inbox and on Spotify.